The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. Do you remember Alice Frazier? Alice Frazier was the 68-year-old Afro-American woman from Washington, D.C., who, when she met the Queen of England, broke the rules of protocol and British propriety by reaching out and giving the Queen a big hug. One newspaper declared it was the first time in recorded history that a commoner had hugged the Queen of England. When interviewed later, Alice Frazier said that in the midst of all the pomp and ceremony of the royal retinue, she had simply followed her own friendly feelings in embracing the queen. Friendliness, honest affection and love can cut through the formidable formality of life and engender warmth and goodwill. And that 2,000 years ago was the message of this Jesus of Nazareth, a message of love. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There was a religious social worker early in the 20th century on the East Coast who visited a poor woman who was very ill. The woman said, there's nothing you can do for me, but if you'll do something for that poor child who lives next door in the next apartment, you will be helping me. The child was heard screaming with pain, and blow after blow could be heard. And it was a daily occurrence, this sick woman said. So this Christian social worker went to the courts, but was told at the courts that at that time no one could interfere between parent and child. She went to the charitable institutions only to learn that they could do nothing without a prior order from the courts. At last, in despair, she appealed to the SPCA, the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, and said to them, if that little girl cannot receive humane treatment as a human being, as a human child, she shall at least have it as a member of the animal kingdom. The SPCA sent an officer to investigate. He beat down the door, and he found that little girl lying bruised and bleeding. He wrapped her in a blanket, and he brought her before the court. And then it was, based on that case, that there was organized the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. And now the courts can protect children from inhumane parents. The greatest need upon this planet is the need for love. Dr. John Coleridge Patterson, the first physician to come to the Melanesian Islands, was slain by the natives of the island of Nukapu in 1871. But later, the children of those very men who slew him erected a cross on his grave, and it bore this inscription. His life was taken by men for whom he would gladly have given it. That is love. But to what noble cause or purpose have you given your life? To what have you dedicated your time and your energies? God, the living God of this universe, has a plan for this planet and a purpose for your life. And the kingdom of God is within you. A fragment of infinity of God's very spirit indwells your mind this very moment if you will give your life to God. Historians report that during World War II, the Japanese troops invading Malaya crossed rivers and swamps on bridges supported not by pilings driven into the ground, but on bridges held on the human shoulders of fellow combat troops. Such is the nature of all progress. You stand on the shoulders of others. You benefit from the past lives and works of many others for all humankind, our brothers and sisters in God's family, with thousands who have lived before and upon whose labors you now build. You stand dependent upon the lives of countless others who have built the bridges you now walk today. And to recognize this truth and to begin to live in gratitude, thankfulness, and love is to begin to live a joyous life. One time in Europe, Dr. F.H. Sales visited the shop of an old potter who was shaping the clay into the desired shape with his hands. But he was asked by one of the visitors in his shop, why don't you have machinery to do all of that? The old potter replied, we've tried all kinds of machinery, but none of it has worked. It's always failed. Somehow, clay needs the human touch. God, too, has work to do on this earth, which cannot be done by computers and machines and gadgetry. It needs the human touch. God has uses for your human life, for your human touch, if you will give your life to God in faith and hope and love. 
and say you're willing to go anywhere, do anything, and be anything. The living God calls you to go and do and be. There will be a new mighty mission in your life. There's an old Scottish prayer, Oh God, help me to hold a high enough opinion of myself. And what is meant is not egotism or shallow vanity, but the superb spiritual self-respect of a faith-born son or daughter of God. That is who you are. That is what you are. That is what you were formed from the beginning to be. God conceived you to be a son or daughter of his, to live in valiant faith, fearless of life and fearless of death, and filled to the brim with love. But that is not an exaggerated egotism or a self-important pride. One time there was a business executive who decided to seek diversion by fishing in the famous streams of Scotland. So he went from the city with a new pole, a complete fishing outfit of the most expensive sort he could afford. After hours of standing out there without getting one single bite from a fish, he came across a Scottish country boy who had only a long branch for a pole, a bent pin for a hook, and a long string of fish that he'd caught. The man said, why is it I can't catch any fish when you've caught so many, as it's obvious to see? The boy said, it's simple, because you don't keep yourself out of sight. Conquer your egotism. Humility is at the heart of a truly great life. Said Jesus, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory or glorify your Father who is in heaven. Not let your light so shine that men may see it and say, oh, what a wonderful, marvelous, magnificent light it is that you have, or what a brilliant person you are, but rather that people give glory, praise, laud, and honor, and worship to God. It is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. And again, Jesus said, God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Praise God, magnify God's name, give thanks for everything you have and everything you are and all the joy which lies before you in your future, living in faith as a son or daughter of God. If you took a poll of people out on a street corner and you asked them which contributes the most. To the benefit of humankind, to the benefit of the world, science or religion, probably science would win the poll. A scientist who's deeply involved in his or her work may spend 10, 12, 16, 18 hours a day on it. I know some at universities who go back to their labs at all hours of the night and morning to check on their ongoing experiments. And yet so many professed followers of religion do very little with their lives. God's frozen people, they have been called. No wonder young people are often bored with spiritual teachings because so many adults are bored with it. They go through their creeds and rituals in such a perfunctory fashion they can hardly keep from dozing off themselves, then wonder why other people are dozing off. Most religion has become banal, bleak, and bland, tasteless. Yet Jesus of Nazareth said, you are to be the salt of the earth, the salt of the earth, the flavor, not the tofu and oatmeal mush, the salt of the earth. Your religion should have tang and savor, not be a tasteless, zestless, amorphous, creedal blob. He said, Jesus, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He said, I have come that my joy might be in you and that your joy might be complete. That is the real source of joy. You can begin to discover it wherever upon this planet you're listening to this broadcast or if you're an astronaut in orbit someplace and you've tuned it in. This very moment, something new can begin for you in your life, in your soul, in your heart, in your mind, your spirit. It's a new love of God, a new excitement with life, knowing that you're here for a purpose, a reason. Life is not some great captionless cartoon or plotless play. There's a purpose for your life, and you can find it in finding God. Once there was a man who left his religious group and went over and joined a men's fraternal association. And somebody was asking his wife why he'd made the change. And she thought for a moment and said, Well, you know, at the religious group... They never gave my husband anything to do. We went week after week, but there was nothing for him to do. But as soon as he joined that lodge, as soon as he joined that men's fraternal association, do you know what they did? She said they put a helmet on his head and a sword in his hand, and they made him the keeper of the royal and ancient arch. And do you know he hasn't missed a night over there ever since? You need something to do. You need a sense of purpose, of mission, of meaning to your life. And God has for you precisely that. 
Living by faith in God is not an idle lethargy. It is a dynamic adventure, a star trek from here to eternity. It can begin this very moment as you listen to this worldwide broadcast. If you'll have the faith to claim it, begin to live in love for God and others and live as the son or daughter of God you were born and created to be. And if you're interested in these topics, write to us. We want to hear from you at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address. SRI Box 3080, Oakhurst, O A K H U R S T, California, C A L I F O R N I A, 93644, United States of America. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Seven Principles of Prayer, Life After Death, What Does Happen When You Die? If you're interested in these topics, no cost, no charge, no obligation. Nobody's going to come to your door with an attache case and try to sell you something. Simply write to the Spiritual Renaissance Institute Box, 3080 Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.